Growth Point emerged from the Investex stable and owns and manages properties in South Africa, Australia, including the V&A waterfront in Cape Town. That was a big deal. Yeah, in fact, I was at the V&A waterfront this weekend, staying in one of those properties, and I must say it was extremely noisy there all the way through <laughs> about midnight, but absolutely thriving and bustling. You cannot believe it. We talk about this one first because, of course, it's the largest market cap, 67.5 billion rand. Trades on a yield here of 5.9. And I'm not sure whether that's the historic yield or the that's forward historic. yield or something. Our yeah. forward yield on this is around about 6.5%, 6.4%. Compared to the benchmark at around about 6.3%, it's one of the first times that this stock is trading at a discount to the benchmark. So, you know, we say as a, as a whole, the so sector is expensive. just take that slowly. So if it's offering a little bit higher yield, that means it's trading at a discount. Exactly. In other words, it's giving you something a little More extra. More bang for your buck. Yeah, which is interesting. Well, this, then you're saying, Evan, just before we go further into the growth point conversation, this could be a buying opportunity. Is that where we're going on a, on a relative to the sector, yes. I think it's, it's time to hold at least neutral. It is a big play in the sector. At least neutral to slightly overweight, yes. Mm. Norbert Sasser, you know, Paul? Not mm -hmm. particularly well, personally. I think you've interviewed him many more times than I've had interaction with him. But this is the blue chip belt and braces, bells and whistle kind of operator in the sector. Exactly. High quality property across the country. What else is worth noting in terms of their international assets, perhaps? They've they got about much? a 17% exposure to the Australian market, and there's been rumors of So 17% of their portfolio is Australian assets. Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. A, a thing to look at growth point, it, it's because of the size, you've got to look at it as a growth point. It's given you six and a half half or so percent and it's growing on average into perpetuity we believe around about seven to seven to eight percent now and i think the reason it's cheaper relative to the sector at the moment is because it's been punished because it hasn't been given these exponential or very high returns of quarter 20 percenters that some of the other stocks have been given again sorry i keep interrupting but i want people want to understand people to so unpack the when you say you're going to think so it's going to pay you the yield so that's like the bond characteristic but it's also going to grow because it's developing its properties and it's adding and it's improving the parking or it's like adding something to the and inflation and that sounds excellent and that is good but you're saying that's not quite as spectacular some of the growth you've seen some some of its competitors you know some of the competitors in the market have been giving you double digit growth mm. no doubts about it commend them for that however i don't expect that from growth point growth point the size really gives me you know a lot of comfort that they can consistently deliver that they can have a huge vacancy in their portfolio but it doesn't really touch mm. size they are of size where you can get continuous I'd say so this is a stable, growth. steady investment. Exactly. Mm. And we like it. You know, it's six and a half percent with call it seven to eight percent growth in the near term to medium term. I'm very happy holding at least neutral in this one. Mm. Paul, this is something to consider. Wait, well, let's go to the three month unlock. Is there anything that can give us? No. Uh, no. Uh, and unfortunately, again, the, the yield at six and a half percent is nice compared to the, the property sector. But compared to the, the broader general bond or fixed income environment, I don't think you're going to get see any significant Are they significant not trying unlock. to buy somebody else out at the moment? No, I mean, they just completed it, the acquisition of AccuCap. Right. And it's a significant transaction. So they've got to bed that down. So they've, they've got the little bit of a kicker from that But that's kind already. of a value for value deal. In other words, what they're paying for it is going to be comparable exactly. to their own yields and so on and so forth. So it's just going to make the whole thing larger. It's not necessarily, necessarily going to see a huge kick up no, out not of in the, the transaction. You know, you, if they, there are some value unlocks. You know, they've got a very conservative balance sheet in my view and they have the ability to unlock not conventional earnings but they have the ability to push earnings but they're not that kind of management team they they're happy delivering seven to seven well, seven to eight percent and i'm happy with them then doing that because mm. it's quality earnings mm. so paul we, we don't have a three-month kicker but this yes. is potentially one as we progress with our conversation to, to yeah, think so about I'm go hot 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 stall because i'm cheerful about the outlook and like this kind of company and think it needs a solid tick in that column. Yeah. Hot or not, Evan? At the moment, in a relative perspective, hot.